again. First of all, I would like to thank you for being here and for staying this long. <laughs> I know it's been quite a, quite a long time, and so I promise you I'll do my best not to pass out here. <laughs> so, um, in Spanish, we have a saying that infancia es destino, infancy is destiny. When I was around seven or eight years old, I read a book about the sam uh, Japanese samurai who wanted to take over Japan and wanted to use petroleum to bring Japan to the front for, of the world. And he was saying how uh, Western countries were taking over other countries and they were coming for Japan. And he believed in a philosophy where the strongest survive and the weak dies. Now this, in my mind, at seven years old, was really, really striking for two reasons. The first one is because it went totally uh, in opposition to what I was raised as a nice Catholic boy, right? To believe in, in helping others and to believe in, in altruism. And also because I kept seeing what this samurai said in the real world. I kept seeing that a big animal eating a small animal, right? And so I try to find the answer to this with my topic, which are the laws of genetics. Um, so I would like to begin with another nice Catholic young guy. Um, this is Gregor Mendel. He was a uh, priest and he was a scientist through and through. He made a series of experiments in which he uh, mix different plants, uh, different flowers. He will put a red flower with another red flower, and then he will see that it will come out another red flower. But every once in a while, he will he, you will see a white flower, and he asks himself, "How is this possible? Two parents are red. How is the other plant white?" After a long time, and after a lot of ex uh, uh, after a lot of work from scientists. We managed to crack the code. We realized that DNA, as complex as it is, is very simple. It has only four blocks. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and one A, T, C, and G. And they are displayed at this man. Mm -hmm. So, this is the sequence of this ba uh, uh, base pairs. And they create the proteins that uh, Michael and that Juliana were talking about. So this sequence go A, A, G, and it will give me a red flower. If the sequence instead will go C, A, G, I will get a white flower. Now we can think, I'd like to begin with an analogy here. I'd like for you to think of this page that indicates one particular trait as one gene. So, if this gene is one page, you know that DNA is a very, very long structure. But nature coils it up and puts all these pages together into one book. And this book, we call it a chromosome. So we have a gene that is a page and a chromosome that is a book, right? But one single book does not contain the entire structure of how to create an entire human. So, we have a total of actually 23 books. And here, ladies and gentlemen, I present you the human karyotype for both male and female. And thanks to the discovery of many scientists, we now can not only see what it is, but we can actually poke into them. If we can see here, in number 15, book number 15, AAG, AAT, ATA, probably means nothing to you. But this sequence is what gives me this dark, beautiful Spanish eyes. <laughs> <laughs> chromosome 16, had, uh, a mutation in chromosome 16 gave Elizabeth Taylor a double set of eyelashes, which make her look very pretty. Um, we can also have a mutation in um, chromosome number 14. This is how it's supposed to look. But a tiny variation on Will, resu will result in uh, cystic fibrosis, which is an incurable disease that we're still looking uh, for, um, uh, uh, for a cure for it. This sphere, 21, is actually pretty special because today we had a talk about Down syndrome. If we had an extra copy of 21, so instead of having one, two, 
we will have another. This will result in Down syndrome. Uh, and now it's time for us to have the talk about sex chromosomes. <laughs> um, it's the main difference between male and females. Males possess X and Y, females possess X and X. Um, the Y chromosome has a specific gene in it that may guys go bold at a pretty young age. As you can see, this is recessive on the <laughs> The X chromosome, very interestingly, uh, could have a mutation that will mess up with your prefrontal lobe. And this has been actually used in court where they show this mutation and they say this person is not capable of controlling his emotions, this person is not capable of thinking rationally because it has this mutation. Now how strong are genes? How really, really interactive are these genes? If you place a baby uh, recently born after 20 minutes that baby is going to start crawling upwards towards the breast. This is what is called breast crawl. And a baby who has no idea what the world is like has this capacity to find food by smelling it simply because of his genes. And this is my, my crucial point on my presentations. Genes are selfish. Genes only want to be passed on to the next generation. Think about it. Your grandparents might not be here anymore, but their genes are still around. You can probably see them in your face. I can see my grandfather's hands in my hands. Oh, okay. Um, animals live in the wild. Uh, bo uh, these are baboons who share 94% of our DNA. Uh, and uh, just to give you a proof of how much we want to has genes in nature, a male baboon, if they come into a previ previously owned um, tribe of, of, of baboons, he will kill the other babies because he wants the females to get pregnant by his own. Female uh, rats present similar stuff where they uh, do self-spontaneous abortion to get impregnated by a stronger male, right? This is because their babies will have a better chance of survival. And I would like to close with this. We already talked about Star Sex and Nathan, and this right here, this is the Verbal Constellation, and this is a picture of a neuron. The human brain is the most wonderful, complex, and most intelligent machine. No artificial intelligence has been capable so far to reach us there. Right? And so where I'm going with this is that I want you to go home thinking I am a human being. Nothing human is foreign to me. No matter how hyenas the crime, if a human did it, those components are in me. But if a human also there's to love, and if a human also there's to create change, those components are also in you. And finally, if you want to live in a society where we work towards a common goal selfishly, you can have very little help from your own biology. This is why it's so important to teach kindness to kids so we can live in a better world. Thank you.